beloved. Here we are in stage one comprehension again, but this time with a whole new section of verses to examine. Let's do a rapid fire review of all of our tools for this stage. So what are our five P's of Bible study? Purpose, to discover God, not ourselves. Remember that. To be patient in the process. Don't move through the stages too quickly. Perspective, the who, what, where, why of the book. Prayer, how does this change the way I pray? And then we're gonna be using our cue darts again. So what questions do you have? What definitions do you need? What attributes of God do you see? What repetitions or of words or phrases are evident? What transition words are present? And what are they referencing? So you can always reference episode one if you need a more ex detailed explanation of that, or you can look at the fact sheet if you want more information on those. As we move into verses four through seven, let's not leave verses one through three behind. Remembering that this was a series of prophetic declarations that have been recorded for you and me to read, we don't want to remove ourselves from the full content of the book. So let's review what our envelope told us. That's our perspective P. The Israelites had neglected all of God's instructions given to them throughout their time in the wilderness and into the promised land, adopting the simple practices of their neighbors. Idol worship, human sacrifice, and continual rebellion had led them into years of oppression by Babylon and Assyria. They were slaves. They were strangers and foreigners in their own land. God gave Isaiah the difficult task of shining a light on all of their sins and demanding their repentance. God declared a season of intense judgment on Israel, but with the promise that at the end of the judgment, there would be a one day hope in the form of a Messiah sent to bring restoration to all that had been lost. And this is precisely where we are in Isaiah 61. We've seen through verses one through three that this me, the one who is sent to save, will be carrying a fresh word of good news that would break bonds, release captives, bind up irreparable hearts, and exchange mourning for joy. What a treasure trove of beautiful promises in those first few verses. So that brings us to verses four through seven. Since we're beginning again in the comprehension stage, I'm going to pull out my colored pencils or pens and begin to examine each word or phrase slowly. In the previous video, I ask you to consider the who is they in verse four. This is key to the rest of the passage, so let's take a minute to remind ourselves of what we learned from verses one through three. This they is those who have been captive, mourning, brokenhearted and poor. These are the least of these that we talked about, which connected us to Matthew 5. The remaining verses are going to be what I like to call flipping the script. When you begin to examine these verses, look out for all the places that Isaiah is promising a reversal of roles or circumstances between the Israelites and their oppressors. In fact, go with me to verse 6. That's the last line. And it says, in their glory you shall boast. This is so cool, guys. That word boast is the word yamar, which means to exchange or change places. Basically, God is declaring to the people of Israel that those who had once been in position of power, lording their glory or weight over them, will one day be made low, changing places with them, placing Israel over their captors. Let's take a look at these exchanges, highlighting them in a single color so that when I glance over the page, I can see them highlighted beginning in verse five. So strangers will feed flocks. Sons of the foreigner will be plowmen and vine dressers. And then in verse six, that you shall eat riches of Gentiles. So here we are with the boasting or exchanging Gentiles earlier glory for their own shame. That word boast is something to write down as a theme. The exchange is something that is repeated throughout the chapter of Isaiah and throughout the entire book. So it qualifies as a theme, write that down. So what attribute of God do you see here revealed in this exchange? For me, I saw God's mercy. They didn't deserve this trading of places. If you read through chapters one through 39, you'll see over and over how God provided for them, but they chose to follow their own selfish desires. I understand that myself. 
In fact, let's turn to Jeremiah 2, verse 11. Has a nation changed, yamar, or exchanged its gods, even though they are no gods, but my people have changed, which is more, bartered or removed their glory for that which does not profit. Okay, so let's break this down. We have that exchange change again. The first change is the word yamar. They've exchanged their gods for other gods, neither of which are real. And the second change is the word more, which means to barter, remove, or dispose of. The people of Israel have disposed of their God-given glory for that which has no value. God in His infinite mercy promises His people a changing of positions regardless of whether or not they deserve it. It is simply because He is faithful to do what He says He will do. That's another attribute, so I'll write that one down as well. Here's the wonderful thing about God's attributes. He is both just and merciful. When you ponder God's attributes, I want you to consider that God never ceases to be loving in His wrath. He never ceases to be merciful in His sovereignty. When we ask God for justice, we're also asking for His, His compassion. He will always be all of those things continually and always. He is unchanging. When we ask God for justice, we are also asking for His compassion. He is and always be who He says He is. So as you continue reading, process how beautiful it is that we can know He is unchanging. That when I pray for God to be my rescuer, my redeemer, my savior, my defender, my champion, asking for His sovereignty, omnipotence, and ultimately His goodness towards me, I can trust that whatever His answer is, it will be for my good regardless of the outcome because He is good. Okay. I think you're ready to do some digging on your own. I'll leave you some questions in the description under this video that might help you along the way. But the point is, read the section. Reread it. I know, you know what's coming next and read it again. Every time you read it, you're gonna see something new and you'll get his words deeper and deeper into your very soul. How beautiful is his word, beloved, and how honored are we to be entrusted with it? You are so loved today, and He is so overtaken by your desire to know Him more through His Word. So get in there. Enjoy it. It is so much fun.